In this exercise, we have a function whose purpose is to swap the values that are being pointed at by the two parameters. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to swap the values that are located at star x and at star y. However, unfortunately, this code as written is broken. So go ahead and take a few minutes and walk through this code to see why the code is broken and figure out how to fix it. I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to work on it, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, let's talk about it together. So first, let's draw it out a diagram of what this code is actually doing, and hopefully by doing that, we'll figure out what is actually incorrect. So when the program starts up, we get an activation record for main, and within that activation record, we have space for each of the objects located inside of main, namely the parameters and local variables. Here we have two local variables, A and B. Okay, so let's assume that A gets placed at address 1000 and that B gets placed at address 1004. Okay, when the body of main is executed, the first thing that happens is that A gets initialized to the value 3 and then b gets initialized to the value 5. Then we have a function call, and our process for a function call is the first step is to evaluate the arguments of that call in some unspecified order. So address of a, well that evaluates to the address value 1000. Address of b, that evaluates to the address value 1004. The next step is to create a new activation record for this function call. And so we'll draw that activation record in our diagram. Within that activation record, we have space for each of the parameters and local variables for that function. In this particular case, we have two parameters, x and y. So let's assume that x gets placed at address 1008, and that y gets placed at address 1010. Okay, then the next step in a function call is to initialize the parameters using the argument values. And since we're passing by value, we're going to get a copy of those values into the parameter objects. Okay, so the first argument, it evaluated to the address value 1000, so that's what gets placed inside of the memory for the parameter x. And again, what we have is we have that x is pointing at the object associated with A in main. And so we'll draw that as an arrow from the object X to the object A. The second argument value, that evaluated due 1004. And so that's what gets placed inside of the memory for the parameter object Y. And now Y is pointing at the object associated with B. The next step in executing a function is executing the body of that function. And so the first line, what it does is it takes the value that results from dereferencing y, and dereferencing y will follow the pointer to get to the object it's pointing at, which is associated with the variable b. And so that gives us the value 5. And that gets placed in the left-hand side object that left-hand side object is the result of dereferencing x, and so if we follow the pointer to what it's pointing at, we get to the object associated with a, so the value 5 gets placed inside of that memory location. Now moving on to the next line, on the right-hand side we have star x, and as we just saw, that takes us to the object associated with a, so its value is 5. On the left-hand side we have star y, and dereferencing y follows that pointer and gets, gets us to the object associated with b. So the value 5 gets placed inside of that object. Okay, and now the end result is when this function will return and those couts in main get executed, it's going to print out 5 for both a and b. And that's not what we wanted. What we wanted was for A to contain the value 5 and B to contain the value 3. Okay, so the fix here is that the problem is that we lost as soon as we assigned into the object pointed by X, 
meaning the object A, we lost the value that was actually located inside that memory location. So rather than losing it, let's go ahead and store that in a temporary. And so we'll add some code before those two assignments inside of swap pointed ints in order to keep track of the old value that's located inside the object that x is pointing at. Okay, so we'll have int temp is equal to star x. Okay, so what that will do is now within the activation record for swap pointed ints, we'll have a temp variable as well. And that'll be at some address, maybe 1018. And it gets initialized with the result of dereferencing x. So dereferencing x means we follow that pointer to the object it's pointing at. Initially, before we change anything, that value was actually 3. Now the other change that we need to make is that when we assign into the object that's pointed by y, rather than taking the value from the object that x is pointing at, we take the value from our temporary object. Okay, so that has kept track of the old value that was stored in that memory location, and that old value is 3. So now when that assignment happens, rather than assigning the object associated with, with b, the value from a, we assign it the value from temp, and so it becomes 3. Okay, and so now we see that a and b have indeed swapped their values. Now running through the rest of the execution of this program, we don't have a return value here. So before the code continues off in main, what happens is that the activation record for that function called swap pointed ints, it gets reclaimed. And then we continue where we left off in main. So the next thing that happens in main is that we get a printout of the value of a, and that value now happens to be five. And then we get the, a printout of the value of b, and that happens to now be three. And finally, when, when main returns, its activation record will also go away.